you see from Janair. Very methodical dismantling of Janair's strategy. That's right. Well, here if we it, go. Who, I mean, who can beat these guys at this point? If they can play like that from behind. Well, that's the real question now is can Janair mentally regroup after something like that? Because after you execute that early game so well and then make those little mistakes and lose like that, that's really tough to overcome, uh, you know, on a motivational level. So we'll see. I mean, looking at the Janair players right now, they don't look too thrilled. And there is a victor ban. Okay. Not going to let Kuro have that one. It does allow Smeb to pick up that rumble again, though. And Kuro, if you can't shut him down with that, you're not shutting him down on Victor. And that's terrifying, actually. He's undefeated 5-0 and so far this season on that Victor pickup. Lissandra will be taken this game by Jin Air. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but so far Victor in general as a champion is, is unbeaten? Correct. I think so, yeah. Crazy. Lee's going to pick up that Jarvan this time around. We're not going to have to play the Rengar. <laughs> and uh, the Lissandra Corky pickup for uh, Jin Air. Certainly strong. GPM, a uh, very good Lissandra player. Good flex pick for uh, Jin Air. Although, probably going mid lane. Yeah, GBM is really good on that Lissandra. But they have the luxury of waiting this draft down and seeing what they want to get right here and they take the Corky again so Jenner could be digging themselves in that triple AP hole one more time they could take the Ezreal right now I think GE will take the Ezreal if they don't however well, uh, Diana would be very interesting to see but I doubt it uh, GBM defaults back to Oriana we know it's over then <laughs> at that point Oriana wouldn't be terrible but again I'm worried about Jin Air, if they take that LeBlanc, I know they like it and they want to keep it out of Kuro's hands, but they will run into the same problems that they had in the last game with way too much AP on their team. Five seconds. Looks like they're going to let it stand, though. And okay, changing it over to Thresh. So leaving that mid pick, or potentially top pick for last. But I think GE just takes. I don't think they take Kogma here. I think they take LeBlanc Ezreal right here. Hmm. I'll pray maybe taking that Graves against the Corky. I wonder. Uh, that looks, well, without the Diana, that looks a little bit more like it. Praise Lucian has been very good lately. Has been used very well against these Corky lanes also. Man, I really would just take Take LeBlanc and Ezreal. Now, both of GE's losses this season have been when they've played Cassidy. And you maybe can't infer a 100% sure thing from that, but... It's a good comp that they have right now. Wonder. I think that's a little bit stronger. Yep. There we go. LeBlanc and Lucian locked in for the GE Tigers. All right, so they don't want to take away from GBM's champion pool, it turns out. They feel confident in the LeBlanc versus Ezreal matchup. Uh, but instead, oh, Lulu going to be locked in last. Well, I am not confident in this composition that Janera is running. They've gone into that heavy AP one more time. Except this game, they GE wants to take the Lucian into the Quirky. Last time, they weren't able to get any advantage whatsoever in the 2v2 with the Janna Ezreal lane up against Quirky. This time, however, it will be very different. Lucian, we've seen how strong he is, able to trade extremely effectively before six. Well, later lane. on, later on in the game too, that uh, Yomu's culling gets people low enough that Crow's gonna have some pretty easy executes on LeBlanc too. So, a lot of concern. But on the Janair side, you know, if Lissandra, Lee Sin goes in, that's a nice wild growth. Possibly some decent combos from Janair, but I really think I'm they should the, have taken the Rengar if they wanted that Lulu. Well, I'm liking GE a little bit better overall too. I think GE definitely has the better composition right here at least in terms of moving into the late game and having a more balanced damage output. Well, if Pilot doesn't build the Infinity Edge like he did last game, they really will be lacking in that attack damage, and they'll find themselves again with just everyone buying Abyssals and QSS. And then what do you do, Del? What do you do? Well, we'll see. Janera has to dig deep to try to tie this one up. Let's see if they can. It's time to get in the game. And 
This is it. GE with a win here. Can go 10-0 so far on the season. Get a 2-0 over one of the uh, better teams in Korea right now and really come into IEM with a, a lot of momentum going. Uh, Even more momentum than already exists, I suppose. After that last game, yeah. if I was going to IEM, if I was one of the teams there, I would be so scared. Well, yeah, when you, when you see a team like Jin Air get a lead like they got <laughs> and still lose, what in the world do you do against these GE Tigers? I don't know. Many no one, no one has the answers, do they? Not, Not yet. It's not interesting. Looks like... Some early warding down in that bottom side. Lee will go ahead and check that brush, but he's not going to find anything in there. He'll be feeling a lot more comfortable in the Jarvan this time after another rather sorry Rengar game is in the books for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can put a W in that column still. <laughs> That's right. It's all, he's, it's all he's about two, the W. He's 2-0 <laughs> and o on Rengar. Yep, undefeated is, on Rengar. That's the stat Lee wants you to remember. <laughs> what a god. Don't look at the KDA. Just look at if he won or he lost. <laughs> Don't look at how effective his ultimates were. Yeah. Don't look at how many bolas he hit. <laughs> he was there. And that's all that counts sometimes. <laughs> Yet another reason to be scared of GE, though. If, if your jungler can have games like that and you still win. Okay. Well, we'll be a lane swap. They don't want to deal with Praise Lucian. Pilot wants to have that level six before he starts laning up against Prey, and that's what they're going to get, so. Can't blame him. That is an elephant with like a dude's face and a baseball bat. <laughs> All right. Things you see sometimes at the OGN studio. Got a deep ward in, but doesn't actually get any harassment down. Che, same story on the other side of the map, so both junglers starting out on the weak side. Yeah. Curl looking pretty good on that LeBlanc. 85.7% win rate. The KDA though for uh, GBM on that Lulu. It, it has been one of his better champions. Yeah, including a game where he had over 1,000 AP thanks to a Magi Soul Stealer at 20 stacks on his Lulu, which then created the fastest Rengar the world has ever seen. <laughs> yep. And also the best protected. <laughs> That's true. Shields, the, the shields were absolutely massive. You got everything. Oh, somebody loves somebody. Blue buff going over to Lee. That somebody loves somebody was in reference to the sign. It wasn't just like the most general statement ever made. <laughs> well, teleport now coming in from Trace. Wants to get into this lane. And Smed will recall after the Krugs. So doing an extra camp right there before he's going to make his way into the top side, most likely. But big, big freeze for both of these teams so far. However, Gorilla not there in order to put some pressure on Trace. So he actually does manage to hit level three first. Now Smed with the TP. And no one on the top side either. You see Che helping out his top laner. Down by the dragon, getting some wards. And Chaser will return to that side of the map. So Smeb gets free reign just to walk up, get some CS, no problem. True enough. You think Corky would feel kind of intimidated against Super Galaxy Rumble because he's so much more technologically advanced than he is? Well, Nar would be the ultimate in intimidation, but we know how that yeah, late matchup goes. The difference is that Corky is like trying to use higher technology, where Nar just like doesn't care, man. Yeah, he's well, just got a boomerang. We've already established that Corky is terrible at building airplanes. Yep, he may have been an ace in the screaming yip snakes, but he has fallen very far. Oh, here we go, gank in the mid lane. Janair trying to come in, and Kuro gets in the river in time. That was delightfully ineffective. Yep, at a ward. <laughs> Delightfully <laughs> ineffective. That's how Kuro's feeling right now. He is <laughs> delighted that it was ineffective. It's true. I stand by my statement. It just sounds like a really bad slogan for something. Like if you make medicine that just doesn't work, but you still want to sell it anyway. I think it's going to become Team Coast's motto soon. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow! <laughs> 
you just went there. <laughs> Delightfully, though? Delightfully for you, I guess. For their opponents. For their opponents <laughs> as well, too. Some people are getting delight. In fact, wow. most most teams are getting delight. So mean. GBM, ah, gets stunned, gets knocked up, and he's in big trouble. The flash happens, and that's still going to be first blood for the GE Tigers. Lee picking up that one. Uh-oh. GBM looks mad. I know that face. That's an angry GBM. Yeah, he had a ward, too. Yes, he did. That's the, that's the worst part about all this. He was totally covered up on that side, both one in the river and up on the high ground. So not playing particularly respectfully. Burns his flash for that as well. Yeah. Lee close right. to dead after those Raptors. Che covering a bit in the mid lane, and Chase are going to come up as well. I really wonder if we're just going to see Janair kind of tilt in this one. Yeah. They've been relatively tilt-proof this season, actually, surprisingly. Um, and they have shown some really good mental fortitude in extremely long best of threes. But after that last game, that is by far, I mean, if there's a game that's going to make you tilt, it's that one. And Jinair's had some pretty demoralizing losses this season, too. So that's saying a lot. But they haven't quite lost one that they were that far ahead on by that much. It's devastating. Well, Smeb not doing a bad job of farming, actually, in the 1v2. Trace, though, as well, in the 1v1, down in bot. Yeah, it's just a single death, though, so obviously yep. not the end of the world. But any advantage that GE gets right now is going to snowball really hard just due to the efficiency of magic resistance. Well, I think the big story here is that Liu is able to pick up a very fast sight stone because of that first blood, and the vision that GE is going to get is going to possibly be making a pretty big difference in this game. Very true, and they're still looking to camp GBM, a bit of camping revenge. Yep. After the last time, and Kuro having to deal with that constant pressure and falling behind in terms of CS. Now we see GBM on the receiving end of a first blood and a whole lot of ganks. Yep, blue buff. Going over to Lee. Actually, he's gonna just give it over to Kuro. What a guy. Oh, meanwhile, action down the bot lane. A little bit of damage. Chaser comes in. And everybody gets out. Ignite used by Che. Flash and Summoner Heal burned over on the GE side. And looks like Flash used by Chaser, too. So, overall, two summoners for two summoners. Yeah. Much worse to get the summoner off on the support, however. So, in terms of for the GE Tigers at the very least, a jungle not having the flash isn't the end of the world. But yeah. just make you a little bit more of a sitting duck in lane, especially against a champion like Thresh. We hand it over to GBM. So, small lead right now for the GE Tigers, mostly just due to the first blood and the CS differential in the mid lane. But beyond that, pretty even so far. Kuro looking for a gank. Now, there aren't wards right there. Uh, equalizer slows down Trace. He's going to try to get out with that E. It's used already. Alt on to Kuro to give Trace a little bit more time, and it looks like the chains are going to miss. Uh, wow. Kuro actually should have gone through try. Unfortunately for him, River was warded, and it would have been harder for Lissandra to escape had he walked around the long side. But... Equalizer burn, same thing with the Frozen Tomb, at least. So we're just going to have some more farming up at top. Chaser now walking in. Pink Ward was destroyed in the river. Smeb overheated, but Chaser going to be there a little bit too late. He's actually going to show up here. Are they going to dive? It looks like they're going to maybe try it. Yeah, going in, they get the flash out of Smeb at least. So a win on the summoners from Jin Air. Yeah, low probability, I think, of that kill actually working out, but at least they got a summoner spell out of the deal. A lot of times early on, it seems like that has to kind of be the objective more than anything, is just getting that flash out to set up future games. It really seems to work. But ultimately, tower not going to go down, and they saw the jungler, so that'll be instant attempt at the dragon. They have the edge and the pressure in the bottom side as well, so no problem. Uncontested dragon. Yeah, and Jinair with that ward there just has to kind of watch it happen too. Not able to really do anything about that one. Uh, not especially now with GBM situation. Yeah. Uh, by not getting the tower, not getting the kill up in the top side, Chaser 
actually sacrificing quite a bit for just a flash and GE making the most of it. Interesting. Trace actually starting with a Negatron or a Null Magic Mantle this game actually. So wanting to get that early Negatron cloak up against the Rumble again, it would appear, especially with that magic penetration haunting guys already done on Dismeb. Doesn't have too much money with the extra Doran's ring. They want to get a gank right here. Lee will walk into a war. Chaser waiting for the counter. Gorilla in the wings. Behind the turret in the tri brush. Be careful. Oh, they try to go in. They don't get the knock up on the trace. Lee gets ulted. There's the equalizer coming down, though. They're going to try to turn it around. Lee's still very low health. Oh, and Trace barely can't hit him with that Q. Looks like everyone's getting up for now. Nice attempt. Not following up on it, however. Yep. But really a bit more burn there from GE. Overall, they did have to, well, flash for flash, pretty much equal, actually. Very back and forth game so far with not a lot of kills in spite of the attempts. Difficult to lock down some of these more mobile champions. And Trace has been playing forward. He's been clearing the wave very effectively and wanting to put the minions down so they can't find that gank onto the long lane rumble, which is usually what we see. Most of the time, players will opt to kind of freeze next to their turret against rumble just to put him in the most vulnerable position. But Trace has not been making that decision this game. Yeah, I mean, one of the things with Lissandra, too, is that it's really easy to push the wave if you decide to use that Q to CS, too. Oh, GVM trading with Kuro. And a little bit down in CS, but not the end of the world right now. Yeah, he's actually caught back up ever since he died, too. It's yeah. a slow process, but he's getting there steadily. Chaser will pull these Raptors in after seeing that pink ward go down. This might, however, to get a ward clear of his own. Che and Pilot taking the Scuttle Crab, but just for a little bit of extra vision for themselves as they want to move the wave on up. It's your most hated thing, man. Somebody other than the jungler killing the scuttle crab. It's fine if the jungler isn't around, Doa. If the mm. jungler is standing right there, you need to give him the crab. If he's not and you need that extra vision, go for it. Just that extra gold is so useful for a jungler who already starved out most of the time anyway. <laughs> The scumbag thing is if the jungler is like autoing the crab to go in and last hit it. <laughs> yep. All right, another blue buff for Kuro. And uh, definitely much more of a little bit of a passive game this time around. Some trading in bot lane, but Janera just kind of playing it out normally, not really executing any sort of intricate plan to uh, gank anyone this time around. You know, I don't really know what Janera's plan is in this game, Doa, because I feel like they're, they're not really noticeably stronger in the mid game, uh, especially considering there's a rumble on the other team. Mm -hmm. But with the itemization that we're seeing, the Athenes, and uh, I don't know if they don't get a big, if they don't get a big advantage, they're certainly just going to be out itemized late, just like they were in the last one. So I'm a bit concerned for them because I don't really see any point in time if all else is even, if they have even gold, when they will be able to get an advantage. Oh boy, and with poke like that on the GBM, you're certainly not gonna get one in the mid lane. I feel like they have to maybe make something happen around this next dragon. They, well, but then there's a rumble too, so well, he's gonna, gonna be gonna in a power spike. And then this LeBlanc isn't going to get any less scary, and the difference is GE has much more of an attack damage threat in this game. Well, that's the tricky part then. If you can't really do it in, your, in lane, and it's gonna be hard near dragon, when do you do it, GBM? Shields himself, dodges him through the skill shot. So, ah, oh, Smeb, Trace going all in. Chaser right there, lands that Q. Shilling smites Smeb, trying to get away, but there's a kill for Chaser. So, Jin Air does come back with a successful gank in top. And now and they're going to get the turret, turret, too. This is great timing for them. This yeah. is exactly what they needed. If they can push the lane up, they can force a bit of a hard decision around the dragon, potentially. Yeah, that's something. But it's going to take a lot more than that. Otherwise, it's going to look very similar to the last match where GE is just going to be able to wait them out. Eventually, Janir is not going to do any damage whatsoever. And the QSS will be devastatingly effective again against the Lissandra and the Thresh. 
GE responds with a turret of their own in mid lane and now dragging up in about 40 seconds. Kuro lurking in the river. They not don't enough really have wards. any wards. Yeah, yeah, really not saying. enough wards. <laughs> not going to do a lot with that. All right, Janair really wants this dragon. Equalizer up for Smeb right now. It's not going to be easy. They will get the Rift Scholar, though, which is nice. It's actually really oh. important right there. He took it right in front of Chaser. <laughs> what disrespectful Wow. 80 carry play, Goa. It's OK. Chaser just goes, why don't you Valken to four of their teammates then? <laughs> that's right. That's the strategy. Just tilt your teammates right before the, <laughs> the next big team fight. It's a great Start idea, Start right? fighting in the booth as much as possible. Yep. I've heard it's popular. Janera trying to take up positions around the dragon area right now. Smeb walked all the way down, doesn't even need that teleport. Oh. Whoa, they got the flash out of GBM. Oh, yeah, man. He had no allies around him, so if he was chained right there, the odds that he would die were pretty high, so he does have to go ahead and use that summoner. Trace still looking to see what he can do, trying to put some pressure on the mid lane, but he's going to head back up top, and maybe they're just going to attempt to get some damage on a tier two for this one. Trace does have his ultimate right back up now. So it took a while, but. And they're going to, looks like, maybe let G have this one. Trace they're coming down. Home. Yeah, that's right. Teleport coming in. He's going to come over the wall. Dragon taken by GE, and they're going to try to disengage. Trace, though, will he come in? No, teammates too far away. Yeah, I think if, if he would have followed up with that, I think he would have had a bit of a hard time. Teleport, though, for Smep. They're going to try to save this mid lane turret, it looks like. GBM right there, equalizer. Clears out some of the minions, but they're going to turn. There's the ult on the Smep, and he's going to go down. So they do defend the turret, but they have to give up the top laner to do it. And Pilot has to flash out as well at the end of that one because he was getting a bit too close to LeBlanc. Now they have to get an objective here. They can't do this. Prey is heading down to the bottom side, so they can put some Siege down. Kuro will be able to try and clear this one out. They could also put pressure on the top lane. Jin Air just not really following through. They could have all rotated up there to the Tier 2 and top and followed that pressure down, especially with Prey on the opposite side of the map and Smeb dead and then without teleport. That was actually a big missed opportunity. They should have all walked down or walked up into top and used that big minion wave. Instead, they get nothing. Well, Pilot comes back to defend that tier one turret a little bit. Pretty low kill game so far. Well, these games can be Jin Air at their most dangerous because in an ultra late game with very few kills, Janair's positioning tends to be the best. Yeah. And they make very few mistakes. Last game was a bit atypical for them, making some positional errors in the late game or team fighting errors. It's it, That's not really what we've seen from Janair so far this season. Yeah, it was. Honestly, I felt like they looked a little bit flustered, you know, after they started losing a couple people here and there where Pilot went in and died. The movement started to look very unsure. There seemed to be a lot of kind of second guessing going on, you know? Yeah, I agree. Well, Trace has gotten the faster home guard enchantment as well. He wants to start creating these picks once his TP is back up. Let's see if they can find anything. Pilot may be able to get a bit of damage down onto this lane, but with Kuro threatening, he'll back off. You'd think Lissandra would have to be kind of careful about how fast she moves, you know? May not want the home guard, because if you move too fast, you just melt your legs, basically. <laughs> That there'd be that much friction created by the air? Well, possibly. I mean, she doesn't walk, so it's got to be just sliding along, you know? Uh, she'd have to be moving pretty fast for that, but I suppose home guard is pretty darn fast. It is. So fast you leave, like, trails of fire. So that's, that's, that's really fast. <laughs> blue buff does go to GVM, and he certainly could use it. He's going to go back and defend that mid lane turret. I really wish that Lissandra, instead of just breaking into ice, if she was like killed by flame spitter or something like that, that she would just melt into a puddle. <laughs> That's where we're working towards that. We'll have it someday. <laughs> Unique death animations, maybe. Depending on what type of damage kills them. True. You do it. I, I want to see like uh, ragdoll physics, you know? If you hit someone with Poppy, I want to see him bounce off that wall. <laughs> that would be, be sick, man. pretty funny. I mean, 
StarCraft already has those unique death animations, depending on what kind of damage kills them. Looks really good, too. Yeah. StarCraft also has replays, though, so. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> wow. You are just all about making friends today, aren't you? Uh, GBM in a successful war against the wolves, or the wolf with two head. Is it wolves? I mean, is it? That's yeah. a great question. Yeah. Does two brains or two bodies make something plural, though? We'd have to ask the wolf, I guess. I think it depends on whether or not it is self-aware. Yeah, that's true. If it has two heads, but it's not self-aware, it just counts as one. Hmm. One entity. One entity. But if it is, if it has higher cognition, then it's two. Right, because you could have very, two very, separate personalities. Very interesting philosophical conundrum. I suppose. Thank you. Riot for making us <laughs> making us think deep thoughts. About the ethics of killing the wolves. Is it one murder or is it in fact oh, wow. a double homicide? This got dark really fast. <laughs> Yanks. And the the greatest question is what the heck does Bard do? He just kinda shows up and takes valuable things. He's like a he's sort of like a anti Indiana Jones, you know? He's like Indiana Jones is like, this belongs to a museum. Bard's just like, I'm taking this by <laughs> I'm not going to like sell it or anything, but I'm just going to make sure nobody can see it. My favorite part is that we don't even know what happened to it. He just like disappears. I know. I like how the, the old dude's like, we need this. He's like, see ya. <laughs> Thanks, Bard. <laughs> Scumbag Bard. It's all right. I think it'll accurately reflect the, the scumbagginess of his ultimate. Dude, that's, I cannot wait to play Bard. Can't you just wait for that moment where you're like doing Baron and you have a Bard on your team and then oh. he casts ults on the Baron pit and the enemy jungler just walks in and smites it? Oh, don't remind me. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if it's going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen. I promise you that will happen. Yeah. Right now the radius on that ult just seems so big that I, I wonder if it's going to get reduced because you can cover a lot of space with that. You could cut. It seems like you could cover the entire Baron pit. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Yeah, I haven't gotten to. I'm curious, very curious about Bard in general. Me too, dude. His uh, his magical journey is going to be <laughs> really fun to kind of mess with. <laughs> magical journey. For once, not like a 1960s psychedelic rock album. It's true. Bard's a bit trippy, though. Dragon's up again. And will Jin Air be able to land this one? We've got the Rift Scuttler. It is... Jin Air. Jin Air, We use yep. Smite for it, though, so it does delay, actually, their Dragon attempt. Yeah, only for about 15 seconds, though, because you've got those two Smite charges. So it is up again right now. Does allow GE Tigers to get a little bit more of a position, though. Right. And they're trying to push this tier two. Mm -hmm. Trace wants to move that minion line up and at least make GE think twice about this. But without that mid lane tower, they really are having a hard time keeping their pink wards alive and maintaining vision control. And Smeb has no trouble shoving the minion wave off of his tier two. Mm -hmm. It's now starting to group up. And Janera's has lost control of the river. And this is exactly what you want with a Rumble and a Jarvan on your team, the ability to clog one of those choke points is very valuable. Well, yeah, no one here to respond to Trace. Well, are they actually trading a tier two for this? Uh, possibly, no, the teleport coming in. Trace is gonna try to flank, it looks like. Yeah, coming in from the side. Oh, but he gets knocked up immediately by Lee. He's forced to ult himself. Gorilla very low. Can Jin Air turn this one around here? GBM doing a little bit of damage. There we go, Pilot comes in with one kill. Dragon's still alive right now. Jin Air turns on it. Smab right there, there's the equalizer. Splits the team quite nicely. Lee comes in, they get the kill onto the support now. Meanwhile, Chaser picks one up himself before going down to Kuro's LeBlanc. Wow. And look at that. Pilot threads the needle on a few of those rockets. No manages kidding. to take out Gorilla in the back line. Uh -oh. Kuro's just gonna W to himself right now. Here comes GBM. Yeah, GBM. Oh, Kuro managed to actually make it a 1-1. And Kuro didn't have to use Ignite right there, too. GBM also panicked and used Flash, so yeah. that he blew that summoner for no reason. Oops. But still, Dragon will, in the end, fall into Jyn Air's hands after an ace. Yeah, bizarre fight. In the end, though. Wow, really, yeah, I'll take the Smeb waited a long time to use that equalizer as well. 
Trace had a great engage, and he slows everybody down by ulting himself right here. Look at this. And Sveb gets silenced, actually. That's why he waited so long. He mismanaged his heat. And so now he's going to try and walk forward. They want the re-engage, but Gorilla already down, and everyone gets off. Sveb flashes forward, trying to get the kill, but no Zonia's yet, so he can't just stand there immortal. And then Pilot again hits another clutch rocket on to Prey. And then panic ensues. GBM's like, where is he? Oh no! Got him with the Glitter Lance Ignite. About two summoners used for none, so yeah. definitely a pretty preferable trade for Kuro right there. Now, GE may have lost that, but they're still in a really good situation in this game. There's not a whole lot for them to be concerned about. They get that Aegis, they're going to be really comfortable, although they're pretty far away from using that, or getting that item, rather. Yeah, Trace just backing away, didn't want to get dived there. That'll give Pilot some time, though. Oh, teleport. Coming in, and they won't be able to quite finish off that turret due to Smeb coming down and saving it. So another objective in favor of GE, and no response from Jin Air. Closes that gold gap just a little bit, but GE's just going to get stronger and stronger as this game goes on. Very true. A pilot takes it again. Bag pilot. Chaser's such a good guy, just giving up that 30 gold. That's 60 that gold now have. that Chaser's lost. That's that's two potions, man. Could have been nearly a ward. Yeah. He has sidestone. He doesn't really need five wards. <laughs> but if he wanted to, he can't now. If he wanted to just buy another green one for old time's sake. Well, nobody here to defend this this time. Jenner will put the pressure down necessary to carve through this last turret. But that requires a pretty big commitment onto that side of the map from Chaser. And so that little delay means that GE gets a little bit more free farming in the mid lane, Goro. Jay now walking up, will help out with the CSing, thanks to his Targons. Yeah, at least GPM's got that good wave clear going too. All right, so Janair recalling. They've got that little gold lead, but they're down in turrets. They do have their jungle pretty well warded though right now, Janair that is. Yeah, they're playing a defensive game, but yep. it's not going to be the biggest help for them, I feel, though. Uh, although GE just isn't picking up this Aegis or anywhere near as much of MR as they were in the last game. Of course, there are less burst threats on Janair. Sandra, really the only major one in that case. Yeah, she's a pretty big burst threat. Doesn't have the most AP this game, however, so no death cap and only a little bit of MR shred at this stage, or. But definitely, I think GE. Oh, oh. Trace. But I see. Yeah. Oh, wow. He got way back in the river. Oh, but Lee comes in with the QE knockup, and Kuro comes in. Lee kind of slows people down with his own ultimate, but Kuro's going to be able to pick up a kill with that ignite. Had to flash for it, though. Summoners out of the way. They did get Trace's flash throughout that. And the importance of that flash and ignite coming through right there. Had he had to use them in the earlier dragon fight where he died, that may have turned out differently. Trace actually opting not to Zonia's or ult himself just in case he needs to use them immediately after coming up. Because remember, he does have that teleport, so they would have been on cooldown more than likely. Yeah, it seemed like he knew he was Pretty dead at that point. At least he got the flash follow-up. And one death, not going to make too much of a difference in this game, especially with that dragon down and the outer circle of turrets already destroyed in favor of GE. It didn't mean a whole lot at all in the end. Well, here we are again, another really close game between these two teams and Jin Air kind of still perpetually in that situation where they need to make a little bit more happen. The late game is kind of scary, but uh, it seems like they've kept it pretty close. 
Yeah, they have. I just am not confident that Jyn Air is going to have enough damage once the MR starts stacking up a, on GE down the stretch. And we'll That's see. really the big important part of this game. And Smeb 2 getting closer to the Zonias. Double Zonias and a lot of MR is going to be really problematic for the Jyn Air Green Wings. Very true. Dragon up at 30. And guess what? It's starting. The, the Negatron Cloaks are, are coming in across the board here. Lee has one now. Prey going to be building into a QSS. Gorilla also with the Negatron Cloaks. So this is where it really starts to go downhill for Jyn Air if they don't get a large lead and press their advantage. Well, we'll now. see if they can win some sort of fight at this Dragon, but the ever-present rumble makes that very difficult. Nothing equal about the equalizer. Well, if they can stay out of a choke point, they could be okay. They've been splitting nicely around it in the river. The equalizer hasn't been able to do much, especially in that last major dragon fight. And here's the TP. Yep. TP early this time. And Trace trying to come in again from a bit of a flank here. Pilot trying to cut off people. Smab, they land the Q on him. A little bit of damage. Oh, he kicks him back into the team, but doesn't knock anyone up though. Meanwhile, Kuro over the wall to do a lot of damage to Chaser. Still really good poke on his Smeb. Smeb has teleport though, so it's not going to mean a whole lot if he comes back Whoa, in. Whoa, a lot of damage on the lead. lead. And the culling is mostly neutralized by the Hell Pix shield. Yep. Dragon being taken now by Jin Air. Lee and the rest of GE wants to try to stop this. Jin Air backs off just a bit. GBM gets there now. Smeb back with full health. Yep. After healing, they're still on the dragon. It has healed up just a little bit. Yeah, Are they going right. to go for it? Chaser tanking. We'll see if they can. And there's Equalizer coming down. Can they take the dragon? Meanwhile, Che in a little bit of trouble. Pops that box. Kuro comes in for a kill. Dragon taken by Jin Air. They do manage to get that. A kill for Pilot. Still high health. He's fast because of that whimsy. Oh, Trace blown up by Prey after going in. Jin Air backing away now. Flash from Smeb, but he misses with his skill shot. Prey over the wall, Chaser in a lot of trouble. Meanwhile, they turn it around. Pilot being the hero in this fight, a double kill for him. Chaser still alive right now. Kuro finally getting poked down, and Prey being pushed back by the minions. Chaser needs to be careful here. He can still get burst by Prey and Kuro pretty easily, but Jin Air, a big win there. They get the dragon, they win the team fight. Yeah, and they're, they've got that Aegis, too, coming in. So both teams now with the Aegis of the Legion, but Lee only picking up his after that death. So let's take a look at this again. Now they have control over the Crab. The Equalizer doesn't do a whole lot. Trace hits Lee with the W, forces a flash out of him. Monsoon used a bit early. They eliminate Che, but his box still providing a lot of zone. Trace just ulting, and then Zone using himself with that wild growth stays around for a long time. Now, GE reacts right here really well. They want to get the flank in, but Jin Air responds. They realize what's going on thanks to the pink ward, and then they all in on the flank for the uh, 3v2. Great call first by GE. I think it was smart of them to try and go around and create that pincer, but Jin Air responds, and that's how you do it. You have to play to the weak flank if you start to get surrounded, and Whoa. that is Meanwhile, a dead chaser. I wonder if the uh, Raptors claimed the victim there. We didn't We didn't see. We'll have to go back I, and I find out later. I think they did. <laughs> Clever girl. Well, that's what Riot gets. They bred Raptors. Yep. Muldoon warned them. <laughs> John Hammond was like, spared no expense. Oh, oh, Kuro. oh it's Kuro. Nice uh, play. Yeah. Here's a lantern for your corpse, Jesus. That's, that's right. <laughs> It'll help people examine the crime scene easier. <laughs> oh, Trace. A little bit of trouble. Trace even with the... Magic resist that he has on the Abyssal shows how far Kuro's getting. Now look at this, Kuro, after the Void Staff, didn't even decide to go for the Zonias, just the Spectre's Cowl. It's it's starting to get bad, Doa. It's starting to get bad. Yeah. It seems like that. But Gennaro, Kuro comes in, takes a lot of damage. There's a passive pop, and Pilot caught out. Wild Growth doesn't keep him alive. A kill comes in for Lee. Kuro. Oh no, the doppelganger got taken out. <laughs> got Tigers. hooked and destroyed, but yep. they're still at very full health. There's a monsoon to help them perpetuate this siege. Yeah. And they, need Jyner, a wave. they have some wave clear with GBM, but it's going to hurt if there aren't any rockets. 
Here we go. Trace, Trace over the wall. Nice ult. Can they capitalize on this shake? It's taken out very quickly by Kuro. Trace with the Zonias, and they're going to take him down right after it ends. Jinair tried to fight, but GE just too ready for them. Prey, so much burst coming out of this Lucian right now. <laughs> and it's just uh, the efficiency of that itemization. Well, we're getting to that that late game that uh, the GE yeah, Tigers have been threatening with all game long. It's not going to be good. I think this was a mistake from Genera. They were worried. GBM was worried about playing the mid lane Ezreal into the LeBlanc, I feel. But in the end, it would really help them to have some more diverse damage at the moment because just nobody building armor at all. Now we have Prey with the QSS. Yep. So it's pretty easy for them to deal with Genera and also Pilot. He went for the Blade of the Ruin King. I really feel he needed to just take a chance and go for that Infinity Edge as a second item just to put out more auto damage here. Oh, well, Pilot's had a good game overall, too. 5-1 and 2 so far in this match, but he can't do enough damage by himself. Well, if he gets killed like that, too, by Kuro, there's wow, just nothing. Too. There's no more damage left. At that point, it's so easy for GE to tank all the remaining damage from Genera, as we saw in that fight. Trace had a good engage, but he just couldn't do it. Oh, jeez. Wow. A pilot, up until that uh, last pick, too, had been doing a pretty good job of not getting caught out. But some cracks starting to show now. Yeah, and also Sonya's Hourglass for Smeb, so finally he is going to be more of a frontline threat. I don't really see too many ways that Janir will pull this one out, especially Veil now done on Kuro as a fourth item. It's really very challenging for them. Yeah. Dragging up in about a minute. Looks like Kuro is going to be able to get back in time. Yomu's finished now for Prey. So that's a nice amount of poke. Yep. Those guns look really heavy. They're huge. They are huge. It'd be like running around with two desert eagles with your arms outstretched at all times. Lucian must be super strong. No kidding. He's got to have, like, gigantic biceps. <laughs> or forearms. I mean, look at this. Forearms, too. Yeah, everything. Maybe not triceps as much. You don't need those. Oh, sure you do. Well, You're I holding a heavy I didn't object mean in arm length. Yeah, but that's more of a bicep thing. I think it's pretty if you're much holding an object at arm's length. If you like flip it, if you like flip your arm around, if you hold the gun sideways, then you engage the tricep a bit more, Monty. So it all depends on how Prey is holding those guns at the time. All right, I'll and trust your, I, I your mean biology actual, degree here. I mean actual guns and not like guns is in his arms guns. <laughs> I have to designate which guns I'm talking about. Yo, oh, oh, somebody use an elixir. Yeah, it was uh, Kuro, you popping oh, the Elixir yeah. of Sorcery right there. Yep. And You're they're right. trying to force a trade for the Dragon, but it's just not going to work. I don't... Siege should be pretty successful by GE. They've already cut off Jinair around the side, and they find Ooh. Trace for some good poke damage. Oh, it's going to make it really hard for him to be the engage that Jinair kind of needs him to be there. Just going to lose that turret. Lee getting grabbed a bit by Thresh. It's going to make it out, though. Good disengage for the GE Tigers. Dragon is up. Yep, and they are pretty confident. Oh, here we go again. They've but won a fight like this before. Wow. Oh, but Trace really out of position now that the fight has moved into the mid lane. Lee still in a little bit of trouble, though. Kuro, though, just evaporates Trace in a 1v1. May have had a little bit of help from his team, but Trace either way. Trace didn't use ult or Zonia's right there either, so pretty big wow. mistake. Either way, it's going to be a Dragon for the GE Tigers. And Jin Air, yeah, GE takes the Tiger or uh, the Dragon lead there. Yeah, things starting to slip away from Jin Air at this point, pretty majorly. Yeah, I feel that Jin Air really didn't have another composition in mind for tonight, and they didn't even feel like playing that. Okay, he just gets straight up caught out right there. Oh my! Wow. Well, probably didn't expect that much damage though. Oh. The fact that this LeBlanc is so dangerous. Kuro has seven kills now. You wouldn't expect him to be doing that much damage with a Banshee's Veil, but that's how far ahead he is. He's up a core item at this stage. 513 AP at the moment. Got some magic penetration as well, of course. 
and still no void staffs on the side of Jyn Air. So in the face of all of this MR, they don't have a void staff on either their top or mid laner, and that's well, that so a bit killer. Odd. Yeah, it looks like GBM may be going for it now. Possibly Trace too. Yeah, it's unfortunately just it's a little it's too late. late. Yeah. They have to somehow survive for the next basically 10 minutes or so before they'll be able to complete those items. If there's any team that's able to survive into the super late game, it is Jyn Air, but then again, this is the GE Tigers. This is the yeah. best team in the world right now. And they have to deal with a lot more Dragons and Baron pressure in that time frame. And probably Kuro will find somebody to kill. Yeah, that's right. Lee coming in. Pops that ultimate pilot flashing away from it. Lee still in the back to Equalizer. Did manage to split up Jin Air. Trace gets taken out immediately. A lot of damage, though, done on both sides. Lee extremely low. Kuro low. Gorilla low as well. Prey still in good shape. Trying to set up a little bit of a pick right there, but there is a... Wow, yeah. Pilot. Oh, Pilot's got to be careful. Oh, he managed to get the rocket kill onto Lee, though. Pilot's played really well this game. No kidding. He's he's had a very, very good Corky. He's gotten so many kills for them, and they actually managed to trade one for one at the end. Wow. Trace getting his ult down and his Zonia's down in that little fight. Instead of leaving them both up. And are they just what are they doing? There's a big, big minion wave at the bottom side, so GE's going to start messing with them around the Baron pit just to see if they can get that tier two turret. Nobody from Jyn Air able to clear that out. Trace is dead and doesn't have teleport, so it's free turret. Good. Great minion wave play from GE. They're able to stall it and they're able to farm out topside at the same time. Echoes of the old uh, Najin Winions there. <laughs> Indeed. Well, no stranger to playing with Winions, that's for sure, from his tenure on Notch and White Shield. Yeah, that's true. Doesn't even need to be Super Minions anymore. So it looks like it will be a Baron attempt by the GE Tigers. There is vision for Jyn Air, though. They've got that ward behind Baron, and the Tigers decide to back off. Probably a bit safer. Yeah. And they're perfectly fine. They should feel really, really comfortable. Trace, though, going into the late game. No teleport. I wonder if GE is aware of that. Yes, almost certainly they are. But they want to pick up some of these buffs, go back, grab some items. Of course, Crucible now done as well for Gorilla. Just not a whole lot of hope, I feel, for Jyn Air. Oh, Trace tries to come in. Can't quite catch Kuro. Really would have rather seen the, the mid Ezreal this game. Yeah, we know GBM's good on it. And he's, a, he's a good Lulu player too, but I think you're right. I think they do need the mixed damage. Not to mention just the damage in general from Ezreal late game. Yeah, I also really like GE prioritizing Rumble in this last game. Trace has been such a monster on that champion, even from behind this season. That it's a good take. Oh, Equalizer oh, comes through. That is a big one. Wow, the Cataclysm right on top of it too. Trace teleporting into the fight really late. Pilot low. Gorilla pushes people away, gets a little bit of healing in, and now here comes Prey untouched so far. A double kill for him now. And if anyone can keep chasing, it's going to be Prey, but they're going to turn right for that Baron. So Corky finally has that Infinity Edge, but you know what I'm just wondering, Dilla? If he had had it sooner, be considering that GBM has emphasized just shielding this Corky, using Wild Growth on this Corky, if he had been able to output a lot more damage from the front line earlier on in this game, I think it could have gone Jyn Air's way, but... Yeah, one wonders. You don't need... If you're going to have this big AP Lulu on your team with tons and tons of shields thanks to her item build and the amount of AP that she has. I really don't think you need a Blade of the Ruined King. Especially when there's not really a big tanky character for your enemy, at least not coming out of the top lane. Lee now pretty tanky in his own right, but nowhere near what you'd see from a Maokai or a Mundo or a Nar or something like that. So I think that the itemization from Pilot could have actually snowballed this game in their advantage had he chosen to build the Eye Edge a bit earlier. Hmm. Even just Vamp Scepter, he could have just held a Vamp Scepter, gone to Eye Edge, and then Last Whisper. Because he has been a bit of a hero for this team, but unfortunately I feel that the, the window that they had has effectively disappeared. 
Now there's another Dragon up in 13 seconds. It would be number four for GE. That's a big threat for Janair to have to deal with. And they're kind of in that desperation mode, you know? Do they try to fight it? Laughter all around for the GE Tigers. It's going to be an uncontested Dragon. That is, like we just mentioned, Dragon number four. And they have the Baron buff. All Janair can do is just try to hold on, just try to defend that base. Look at the Rylai's too. Attempting to deal with some of the mobility that Jenner has via Whimsy. They've been close to killing Pilot a couple oh, of times. They wow, caught nice me with grab. death sentence, yeah. Tanky though, Chaser comes in, they kick him, and he manages to get out with the safeguard on the Kuro. Meanwhile, GE pushes that super minion wave into the turret. Gets dealt with pretty easily by Jenner. Ali oh, just going to zip go. out with an iron elixir right now. Definitely needs a, a pole vaulting move. I mean, yeah, I know he can like throw his spear and like pull himself to, over to the uh, banner, but we need to see like a talk uh, about the hop le thing. The least combat effective move ever. <laughs> the Damasian army really just goes through some pretty convoluted and nonsensical training. Why would you need to throw a flag and then hook a spear onto it at any point in the combat experience? You don't need to. You don't need to do this, but Jarvan is such, you know, he's like the king, man. He has to, like, style for his subjects, you know? <laughs> style for your subjects? Is yep. that a new king thing? Yeah, that's right. You know, if he's good at breakdancing, he has to just, like, breakdance for his subjects. Like, wow, us peasants have nothing to eat in Demacia, but man, Jarvan can break dance. Good thing he can afford all those break dancing lessons. That's right. Hard to do those head spins with his uh, with his outfit, though. <laughs> Janair trying to defend this 2 2 turret. And they're going to turn in on that a little bit. Yeah, GE just playing it really safely at this point. Oh, meanwhile, split push from Kuro nearly takes down Trace. Chaser. Goes after him, but the Q misses due to the flash. Prey activates that calling just to push Jinair back again. Oh, they grab Prey. Ah, but he cleanses right out of it. And the turret in a little bit of trouble now. Actually, they're just going to give that one up. Yeah, without the Baron buff, it is really hard for GE to actually close this game out. Jinair does have a decent amount of wave clear. They're trying to split push with what remained, but you're just not going to be able to split push too fast with the LeBlanc, even if you do have the four stacks of the Dragon. True enough. And so, we may just see this drag out into the last Dragon, Doa. Wouldn't be the first time. GE really wants to play as conservatively, conservatively as possible and ensure that they come out with the win here. That makes sense. Things have been a little bit wacky in the last two matches, so a methodical, clean win here in game number two I think is exactly what they need to end the week. You know, honestly, if I was Pilot, I'd switch to Zerker Greaves right now instead of Sork Juice. Well, you're not going to gain much from that magic penetration at this point, are you? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, you're not. So I think having a few extra auto attacks and maybe try and get lucky with some crits with your last whisper may be the better course of action if he is already maxed out at that six item threshold. He's going back, is he gonna do it? Uh, nope, he sold his, uh, his Blade of the Ruined King for a Bloodthirster. Which is okay. also good, actually. Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, look at this. Damage coming in. And oh, oh man, no. he forces Trace to ult himself. That's a big cooldown out of the way now. Kuro has just been all over Trace this game. Yeah, he's been playing really well. 7-1-4 in game number two. Luckily for Trace, that ultimate on a relatively short cooldown at this late stage of the game, so... Yeah. That was a smarter way to play that instead of going ahead and using the Zonias, considering you weren't going to catch that block anyway. Yeah, Janair just kind of clinging to life at this point. Another dragon in a minute 30, and this is what the GE Tigers are waiting for. With five dragons, they should be able to end this one. Could also take a Baron and then just really ultra end it, I suppose. Now, will Janair maybe think about trying to get GE to trade a
Baron for the Dragon? Well, they're going to have to do something, and GE's will have to have a delicate dance. They either need to all in this Baron immediately when it starts and then try and move over to the Dragon, or just attempt to play both objectives at the same time, maybe by uh, just having Prey take the Dragon while the rest of the four of them threaten on the Baron to prevent Jyn Air from getting it. There are a couple different strategies that they could use in this situation, depending on how patient they want to play it. Ooh, Ooh, GBM. GBM. So scared, rightfully so. Yeah. Not enough vision at all to go that far down. He's going to have to wait for the wave to push up again. Such a juicy big minion wave, though. There we go. Now he's got it. Smarts to be just a little bit more patient right there. You're going to lose one or two minions, but losing your life at this point in the game could, in fact, end everything. Yeah, the death timers are way too long now. Jyn'Air pushing ahead. They really want this dragon. They really want something. GE Tigers. Oh, Chaser walks right into it, manages to safeguard away a dangerous moment for Jyn'Air. That was almost it right there. Had the whimsy on him immediately. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Cataclysm onto Trace. Meanwhile, GBM on the outside. Trace manages to get the ult down onto Lee. Lee comes back. The box in an okay position, but GE Tigers is totally fine. The back lines. Prey takes out Trace. And GE Tigers without a jungler, feeling a little bit okay. Oh, Kuro takes a lot of damage, actually. Pilot, wild growth on him, doing a lot from the outside of this fight. Chaser pulls back as well. Smab with the flash, can't quite take down Chaser. Che will flay him away, but here comes Kuro. One kill going in. Smab roasting GBM, forcing the flash in the base, and now Smab just going deep. There's a dive, the heal. Smab steps out of it, pops that Zonius. GBM in trouble, there's another kill for Prey. Make it a double, unofficial triple overall, I believe, in the fight. They're trying that to tank this one out. Smev will absorb the laser with his shield, and that should <laughs> be the end of this game for Sad Rumble. Yeah, a little bit of uh, KDA buffing there for uh, Oh, GBM. look, they're actually just going to go for the towers instead. So GE not looking to finish at the moment. Want to get two inhibs and then take out a dragon. Or, or not. Well, I just decided to take out an extra turret. I don't know. Fantasy points, right? One Nexus turret down. Another Nexus turret threatened. Eight seconds until Trace comes back up. Chaser doing everything he can. But there goes the Nexus. Trace is not going to be up in time. And it will be a 2-0 for the GE Tigers. That makes them 10-0 and on the season. They are still undefeated. Yeah, very strong coming into that last game as well. GE Tigers. Proving once again why they're on top in Korea, able to play so beautifully from behind. Yep, all I gotta say to everybody else that I am is good luck. <laughs> Damn, you gotta feel bad for Jyn'Air too because they yeah. actually played quite well tonight and their early game was just spectacular. They came into it with a very good plan in game number one. Yeah, but they I think they misdrafted. They lost for pretty much the same reason at game two, so they failed to adapt in the draft.